Do your Foundry VTT maps feel too static and boring? Maybe you want to add some animation to your maps to make them feel more immersive. Or maybe you want the whole map itself to move. In this video, I'm going to be showing you four different ways you can animate your maps to impress your players. And stick around till the end of the video because I will show you how to animate elements with something you won't be expecting. Hi there, my name is Fondu, your VTT wizard, and I have over 300 hours in Foundry VTT. On this channel called Dice and Easy, I give you VTT tutorials and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. If you're interested in any of that stuff, hit the subscribe button down there. Before we get started with the video, I've got an exciting announcement. This channel is now part of the YouTube Partner Program. Woo! In practice, this means that I am now able to earn money through this YouTube channel, and it takes me one step closer to my dream of being a content creator full time. So now, if you see any ads on any of my videos, you know that I'll be getting a cut of that ad revenue and it's not just all going to YouTube. On top of that, you can also become a member of the channel, which gives you access to emotes and an exclusive role in my Discord server. And you can also send super thanks. All of this is, of course, optional and is a way of showing your appreciation towards me if you would choose to do so. When it comes to my content, my videos, nothing is changing. I've just reached a major milestone in being a YouTuber and a huge heartfelt thank you to all of you who have watched my videos and enjoyed my stuff. It means the world to me. Now, onto the video. As usual, let's get some basics out of the way first. In this video, I'm using the latest stable release of Foundry version 10, and you should know that there was a new stable release of version 10 that came out on June 26th. Don't worry, this new release only includes a couple of bug fixes, nothing major. I cannot guarantee that these techniques work on other versions of Foundry, however. Then I'm using the tile scroll module for one of the techniques and JB2A animated assets in another one, which requires you to become their patron to get access to all of their art assets. Lastly, I'm using some free map packs for the maps and I'll mention each map pack when I show you each map. Links to all of these resources are in the description below and remember to activate all necessary modules in your game world before doing any of this stuff. Okay, let's jump into Foundry and I'll show you how to bring some animation to your maps. All right, we are now inside Foundry VTT and the first method that I'm gonna show you to animate a map is actually the easiest one, which is using an already animated map file. So this will be a video file, a GIF or whatever of a map that is already animated, as you can see the one over here. So the easiest way to create one is just to create a new scene. We're gonna call it empty. And then when you get the new scene set up here in background image, just click browse and then select a file that is a video file. An important thing to note here is that if you're using video files for your map background image is to use a highly optimized file format like WebM because it is a better file format for when you are streaming your content to someone like your players. So this is the easiest way to do it. The other option, of course, is to use already ready-made Foundry VTT animated packs like the one I was just showing you. This is the Fire Portal from Angela Maps. So there are many map creators like Angela Maps, the Mad Cartographer, the Reclusive Cartographer, and Chan Peku who make beautiful, gorgeous maps, sometimes still, sometimes animated like this, and they are ready to plug into Foundry easily. You don't have to do any work. All the walls are in here. Lighting is set up where necessary. And that way you minimize the amount of work that you have to do. Of course, many of these require signing up to their respective Patreons, but can be worth the while and save you a lot of time. This next technique is using tiles as special effects on your map to bring them alive. So here we have another map. This is the Eldritch Church from Che and Peku, where there's already some animation on the map itself, but I've used some tiles here to bring in additional movement and animation to make it feel more alive. Let me show you how I added these. So this is the version of the map that doesn't have those special effects in here. As you can see, there is a little animation already here with these little waves going around that bring a little bit of life to it, but I wanted to add even more pizzazz to the map. So the way that I did this is I used JB2A's animated assets, which you have to sign up to their Patreon to get the full set that you can then get as a Foundry module, but they also have a free version. Links to those, of course, are down there in the description. But I used those as tiles 
here to bring more life to it. So let's add those now. So we go to the tile controls on the left hand side. Then we go to the tile browser over here. Go to the bazaar if you're using the Forge VTT. And then we scroll down to the J part to find the JB2A Patreon list. Here we go. Then we go to library, generic, portals. Then go to the masked ones because I want the center of that map portal to be visible. So masked. And then we grab, where is it? Leave I used this one. So bright yellow and it's in perspective as a top down portal. Then we select this video version of the portal, not the image version. The WebP is just a still image. We want the animated video version, which is here. Por portal bright yellow V no BG Web M drag and drop. And there it is. Now you can see it is animated. Firstly, it's too small. We need to scale it up. Secondly, the rotation is wrong. So what we're going to do is double click it, then go to rotation right in 90. And there we go. We have it now rotated correctly. Now we're going to scale it. So we go to this little corner over here and scale it up. While you're scaling, it's going to revert back to its previous rotation. Don't worry, once you let go, it'll go back to what you want it to be. Now, an important thing to note is that when you're scaling with freehand, you're also going to be changing the aspect ratio. That might be okay for you, it might not be okay. In this case, we definitely want to make it so that it is aligned with the map. So we're gonna have to muck around with the aspect ratio a little bit. Let's see, Oop, that was a little much. There we go. So I change the rotation again to make it look a little nicer. All right, we're starting to get close to what looks good. Drag it over there. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty okay. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, what we'll actually do is we will get rid of this rotation because we don't actually need it. So it's better that way around. Move it a little bit over there. Boom, there we go. That looks pretty all right in my mind. Maybe a little bit that way there. All right, now we have it set up there that it looks fairly nice in my opinion. Then what we want to do is right click and go to the top here and then lock the, let me just show you closer, lock the tile so that we don't accidentally move it. And then this little thing here, we had a little tile over here as well to bring a little oomph to this spot where something has happened in the past. So that's what we'll do now. We'll go back to the tile browser. We will go up a couple of steps. Then we'll scroll down here to magic signs then runes and scrolling down, we'll find this cool red one here. And once again, we wanna check out that it's the loop one because there's, there's an intro and an outro version as well. So the thing appearing and disappearing, we don't want that. So we grab the red one and then again, the video file, boom, go over here. Once again, the rotation is not what we want it to be. So we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees, there we go. Then we're gonna move it on over here. We're going to change the size once again a little bit, but this time we're going to hold Alt while we are scaling. That way, the aspect ratio will remain the same. Now, like I mentioned before, you might not care about that, but usually our assets have been made with a specific aspect ratio in mind which means that if you change it, it's not gonna look as good. So there, that looks quite nice. Once again, let's lock the tile into place. And now we've roughly recreated what we had there in the other one that I made before I did this tutorial. And this way we've added an additional amount of animation to our map. Now, of course, this is very strong. You might not want something this obvious, but this is a great way to bring in more life and animation to your map using tiles that have animated assets. So like I said, we're using JB2A's animated asset pack, which as you can see, has a lot of different animated assets that you can work with. Next, let's say we want to create this type of map where we have a road that we're going down and we want to make a feeling that the road is moving or that we are moving on the road constantly. Let's say you have a train track or something like this. Well, it's fairly simple and we just need one additional module to make a world called tile scroll. So let's recreate this once again. I'm going to now be in an empty map. So the way that we create this is once again with tiles. So first we're going to create the road background 
tiles. So let's go to our tile browser and we're gonna go to my assets library because I have it over here. Here is the road. So we're going to drag and drop it here. As you can see, it is very small. The angle is not correct. So first rotation, we're gonna rotate it, I believe 90 degrees, there we go. And then we're going to scale it up once again, holding alt and then scaling because we don't want to change the aspect ratio because otherwise it's gonna be a little bit ugly. So there we go. Now we have the road here. It's maybe a little too big. Let's go back. Nope, that's too much. Let's keep it like this. This is a fairly okay size, I would say. Then we can zoom in on here. Once again, we wanna make sure that it is firstly an underfoot tile. So that means that all the tokens are going to be on top of it, which it is. And then we want to lock it like so, so that we don't accidentally move it. Then next, we are going to bring in the carriage. So once again, as a tile, you could also also have the carriage as a token. So if you had a actor, that is a vehicle, that is this cart, you could do it that way. But we are going to we're going to make it so that it is a tile. So we're going to bring it in here. It is once again very small. So let's make it bigger. Let's scale it once again, holding Alt while we scale things so that we can make it the correct aspect ratio. Let's make it a little bit bigger still. There we go. All right. Now we have the road and the cart. Let's bring in a character in here. We'll take this barbarian from here, bring it over there. The barbarian is now in there. Fairly okay size wise. We might want to make this a little bit bigger even still. There we go. Maybe a little bit too big. Let's bring it down a little bit there. Eh, that's an okay size. It's maybe a little bit big considering the scale of the road, whatever, but I'm here to illustrate a point. You can fiddle with the sizes, etc. later. Now, we have these elements here. We want to make it feel like the road is moving. So we can zoom in and what we're going to do is we are going to double click on the road and with tile scroll activated, the new module, which you can find a link to in the description below. And remember to activate it in your game world. You're gonna to go to the animation tab on your tile. And now you're going to see this extra menu here called tile scroll. Now it is fairly simple. You simply enable scrolling. So now if we update the tile, it will be scrolling. Now, of course the direction is wrong. <laughs> we don't want it to scroll in this direction. So here we can change the direction in degrees. I've done this before, but I, I want it to scroll from right to left. Well, it's going to be the other way around because of how I'm shooting the video, but from right to left. So we're going to put 270 degrees, which means it's going to start from 270 degrees and go in the opposite direction. So now if we update, boom, and now we've created the feeling that this cart is going down the road. The cart itself is not actually moving. The character in the cart is not moving. It's just the background image that is moving. And through this, we create the illusion that the cart is moving. Now you might wanna fiddle around with the speed. So here's the speed over here, but be careful with these. Raising it even by a few numbers makes it go very fast. So let me show you if I raise it to five, now we're speeding down the road and this can feel quite disorienting for your players. So I would keep the speed at a very low number. I would put maybe 1.5. So it's a little bit faster. So now it's like there's motion, the players can feel it, but they're not necessarily gonna feel nauseous. So you wanna be careful with the speed thing because it could make your players feel nauseous. And that's really it. So now if we zoom out, you can clearly see that it's actually just the road moving and it's not that like impressive. But if we zoom in like this, the movement illusion is a lot stronger. And then we can set the scene view to be this by default. So if we find the scene, where do I have it? Uh, I have it over here, there. So if you right click on your scene in your scenes tab, then you go to configure, it's gonna open the window. And then here you can set the initial view position by clicking this, boom. So now when your players are brought into the scene or whenever you open this scene, this will be the initial view position. So that way your players don't accidentally see like this. And then they're like, oh, it's just this tile moving. And instead it's going to be this. So that's how you create movement with tiles. But there's also another way to create animated movement with this module. Let me show you. So let's say we have a ship in the sea and we want to create this whirlpool that is spinning to create a scene where the ship is getting pulled into a huge whirlpool. This can also be done with tile scroll. So let me show you how this is done. So this is the Brigantine map by the reclusive cartographer. It's part of their free pack on Foundry. 
and it is a ship on the sea. But as you see, there's no whirlpool here. Well, what we can do is go once again to the tile browser. I have added a whirlpool asset. Now, once again, dragging and dropping it in here, it creates the tile. Again, it's very small. So what we're gonna do is scale it up. Once again, holding Alt and then dragging so that we can keep the aspect ratio correct and holding a little bit more. Of course, with this map, the problem is that because the ship is part of the map, we can't really create a layered system where we have the ship, then the whirlpool, and then the water, unfortunately, because they're all part of the same image. But if you were to have the ship as a separate tile or as a separate token, then you could create that layered effect. But now we've, we've put the whirlpool here and we wanna make it move so that it creates the illusion of a whirlpool. Easy enough, we double click on the tile, go over once again to the animation tab and in tile scroll. So there's the scroll option. If we enable that, of course, it's just going to scroll, which is not what we want. We don't want the tile to move like this. There's another option here, which is easy to miss. It's called enable rotation. So if we tap that, now you can see that the whirlpool is spinning. Of course, firstly, you'll notice that the whirlpool is spinning in the wrong direction. We don't want that. So the way that we fix that is by going to the speed and adding a negative marker to the speed that will change the direction of the rotation. So now it's rotating in the right direction. Of course, it's very slow. We don't want it to be that slow. So maybe we'll make it like a minus three there. It's a little bit more aggressive now, and you can decide yourself on how fast you want it to be. Once again, I would err on the side of caution so that you don't make your players feel nauseous because you don't want that. There is a bug, however, not sure why it is, but you can see here on the edges, the tile repeats a little bit for some reason, not sure why, but it's a small graphical error that you know is not a huge deal. But this way you can create spinning tiles that bring animation to your map. Maybe you have a wizard's tower with a smoke thing that is twirling in there. You have some smoke assets that you wanna make spin around. You can definitely do that. So this is two ways that you can use the tile scroll module to animate your tiles to bring in a sense of motion and animation to your maps. This next one is an unexpected way to create animation and motion in your maps. This is the red light canal by the mad cartographer and as you can see if we zoom in especially you can see that there's this feeling like the sun is bouncing off of the water over here it creates this very nice feeling of a summer day there's actually no animation in this map itself and the way that this is animated is with light so i'm using two light sources here and light animation to create this sense of movement. Let me show you how that's done. So this is what the map looks like without that light. As you can see, it's still a beautiful map, but this water doesn't really have any movement to it. It's very static. So the way that we wanna do this is by creating two light sources that are going to be working in here. But first, we need to isolate these water areas so that the light doesn't spill into these Street. So let's draw some walls around this and I'll see you in a second. Okay, now we've drawn the walls here, but there's one problem with our walls. They're just regular walls, which means they're going to block all sight, sound, light, movement, etc., which is not what we want. We only want these walls to block the light that is here from going out in this direction towards the streets. So the easiest way that we can do this is by going over to the walls tool and selecting the rectangular select tool and then selecting all of these walls like this let's see if we can get them all yes we can wonderful like this and then double clicking on any of the points now when we make changes to the walls it's going to change it for all of the walls so now we're going to say movement restriction none because maybe you want an opportunity for the players to push someone in there you know you never know light restriction uh, normal sight restriction none sound restriction none Wall direction, we don't want to be both, but because we, we need them to be different because of the sides that they're on, so we'll do that next. Now, when we update the walls, boom, they all changed blue to signify that they are only blocking light. But like I said, we don't want to block light going from the street towards the river. We only want to block from the river towards the street. 
So the way to do that is selecting all of the lower ones there. Once again, double clicking any point and then wall direction. I believe it's left. Let's double see. Yes. So now the wall only blocks from this direction. You can see this little wall of this little arrow with a line. It means that from this direction it blocks from from the other direction. It does not block light from going in. So that can affect the river. And then the same thing from here up top. Let's zoom out. We're going to select these, double click, but here we're going to have the wall direction be right. There we go. Then we have to also do it for this wall. I believe it is left. Yes, sorry, it is right. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing for these. All right, there we go. Now we have the wall set up, so now we can start working on your light. So you might be asking, why did I put a wall here at the end of the map? That's because if we don't put the wall there, the light is going to spill out into this dark area and make it look a little weird. So that's just to constrain the light into this area. But here we don't need to do that. And you'll see why in just a second. So let's start making the lights. Then we're going to go to our light controls. Make sure that draw lighting source is active. We'll just draw a light of any size. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be changing the parameters ourselves. So first, double click on it to open the parameters window. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the bright light to be zero. This is because we want all of the light to be consistent. We don't want some parts that are closer to the light source to be brighter than further parts. We want it all to be consistent. Then we're going to set the light radius to 120 degrees. That should cover most of the light area, which it does. Then we're going to set the emission angle at 180 degrees. Now, what this does is that it limits where the light goes, which is why we don't need a wall in this area. But of course, now you can notice the rotation is wrong and we're going to change it to 270 degrees. Unfortunately, you cannot write it here manually, which is a tad bit annoying when you want to be specific, but you just adjust this and boom. Now we can see that the light is going only here towards the river. And let's update this and let's move this source a bit further here. And now we can see it covers just this area. And because of the walls, it is not spilling over into where we don't want it to. Now let's make it look correct. First, of course, we're going to need to select a color that is close to what we want. So for this particular map, where we want a kind of light blue turquoise kind of look. So something like that should be fine. Of course, now you're looking, it looks awful, but don't worry. Trust the process. We'll get there. Want the color intensity also to be full. Again, looks terrible right now, but we're going to get there. Next, we're going to go into the light animation tab. Now, the light animation type here is important, so we're going to open it up and we're going to scroll down to swirling fog. So you're starting to see that, OK, OK, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. Then we're going to adjust the animation speed to be eight and the animation intensity to be six. Again, it still looks terrible. It doesn't look at all like the river is being hit by the sun, but there is a last tab here called advanced options, which is going to be key here. Now we want the light to be constrained by walls that should be on by default, but if it's not, turn it on and then it will be constrained. Provides vision. Nope, we do not want it to provide vision. It's not that kind of light. Now this is the important part, coloration technique. This is the one that is going to make it look like this is sunlight lighting up the river and brings a feeling of life. So by default, it's adaptive luminance, but we are going to change this to low absorption. And now if I move this zoom in, now you can start to see the, oh, there's that sunlight like movement. Let's adjust these other settings a little bit just to make it pop a little extra. So luminosity and attenuation we can leave as is. Then saturation, we're going to bump up a little bit like maybe no, that's a little bit too much. So let's let's leave it at like 0 0.15. Then contrast, we're going to bring that down a little bit. Let's see, to like 0 0.15. And then the shadows, we're going to bump up a little bit to like 0.1, then update light source. And now we have that nice light that makes it look like this river is being hit by sunlight. As you can see here on the right hand side, this river versus this one, there's quite a huge difference. Now, some things to note, you don't want to make this effect super, super strong. You want to make it subtle so that your players notice it, but aren't distracted by it. So that doesn't 
take too much attention because this is not a center point of the map. This is to bring more life and make the map feel more immersive, which this does. Now, we wanna also add it over here. Instead of creating a light source and doing all those settings again, what we can do is hover our mouse over the light source here, click or hit control C. You can see copy data for ambient light objects over there. And then we come on over here, hover our mouse over to where we want and then hit control V. It is going to copy paste the map. Now it looks like I have set some walls wrong. So let me see what's wrong. Okay, I found out what the problem was. I had accidentally set the movement to be restricted for these walls here, not the light. So that's fixed now. But yes, so we brought our light source here, but the angle is not quite right because it's a little bit different compared to here. It's a little bit more upward. So once again, we go to our rotation angle and change that to be correct. So that that looks kind of right. Let's just bring it up to where we want it to actually be. Uh, we need to adjust it a little bit still. Let's adjust it a little bit. No, too much, too much. Oh yeah, that's, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So 254 seems pretty good. Now, as we can see here, the wall here is maybe not quite perfect. So let's move it a little bit this way so that we can cut the light off where we want it. There we go. And now we also have the same effect on the river here. So if we just get rid of the light tools, boom, this is what the map looks like now after just adjusting light. So with light animations and changing the luminance mode, is that what it was called? Let me double check. Sorry, the coloration technique, you can get a lot of really interesting effects. Of course, it's gonna require a lot of trial and error on your part because depending on the map and what type of element you want to animate with light, it's gonna require a lot of different settings. And so, so poke around, try, see what makes it look cool. With these techniques, you should be able to create some very cool animated immersive maps. There is actually a fifth technique that you can use to bring animation to maps, and that's a module called F. X Master. With it, you can create stunning weather and special effects across your maps. I have a separate tutorial on how to use FX Master on my YouTube channel, and you can find a link to the video on the top right corner right now. Okay, let's summarize. The easiest way to animate maps is using animated map video files. You can also animate maps by using tiles with animated special effects. Thirdly, you can also animate tiles themselves to create a map that is moving. And lastly, you can use light animations to create animated elements inside your maps. With these techniques, you will be creating immersive maps that are sure to impress your players. Which of these techniques will you use in the future? I would love to hear in the comments below. And while you're down there, I would appreciate a like and subscribe. Those are small actions from you, but they help my videos reach more people and mean the world to me. On the screen right now, you're going to see a tutorial video of mine where I show you how to use FX Master to create atmospheric weather effects for your Foundry VTT maps. You should check it out. It's a banger. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.